47 seconds of logos. Backwards N, school spell with a K. How old is Andy supposed to be in this movie again? Because unless it's six, he should know better. Either that or he made all these box buildings as a six-year-old and is still playing with them years later, which is just sad. I brought my attack dog with a built-in force field. Well, I brought my dinosaur who eats force field dogs. Children's imaginations. Computer animation baby collects another soul if you look it directly in the eyes. Also, in this giant-ass two-story house with only one adult, why the hell does Andy have to share a bedroom with the baby sister? Does mom have, like, three separate crafting rooms? Andy is a dick to Woody. This household has a Super Nintendo system, but apparently no games to play with it. Also, Andy has a Super Nintendo, but would still rather play with Woody dolls. Probably because of the lack of games, I'm guessing. See you later, Woody! Unlike most kids, Andy actually closes the door to his room. And good thing, too. Or else the toys would have to wait until no one was in the house to come to life. Pull my string. The birthday party's today? With the sheer number of toys strewn around this house and Woody's apparent wealth of logic and street smarts, there is no way he would get the date of the birthday party wrong. Overly dexterous plastic pig not only tosses coin in the air without opposable thumbs, but also lands it perfectly straight up so it goes into his piggy bank slot. I'm Picasso! I don't get it. You uncultured swine! How did Mr. Potato Head even know Picasso's work to make the joke in the first place? Either Slink has all these checker pieces set up on the wrong color, or else, and I really hesitate to say this, but I may have been playing checkers wrong my whole life. Do the pieces not go on the black squares? Sorry, John Lasseter, no one is reading a supposed 200-page book concerning your 1988 Oscar-winning short Tin Toy. Nice try, animators. What do you say I get someone else to watch the sheep tonight? The scene does not contain a cartoon lap dance. Also, the idea of toys having sex? They're still plastic, right? It opens up so many questions about lubricants and chafing and whether these toys were built anatomically correct. I forgot I was watching a kid's movie. Everybody hear me? Yeah, they can hear you. And possibly Andy and his mom can hear you too. And everybody outside that open window as well. A minute ago, Woody needed the speaker to move away so there wouldn't be feedback. Now he can stand as close as he wants. Take a look at all those presents. I can't see a thing. What if Andy were to walk in the bedroom right now, huh? Do you people have any idea the emotional scarring you'd cause if he saw all this? Woody doesn't order the soldiers out to do recon for another 45 seconds or so, so they literally have no way to know if Andy's approaching, but they're still way out of position. None of the neighbors see this stuff. Am I the only person in America who spies on his neighbors? Wait, his totally solid plastic binoculars actually work? It's a board game! Repeat, battleship! Geez, if not for the surprise Buzz Lightyear later, Andy's gifts would be proof that he's unloved. These toys open the closet door without using the handle. Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Come in, Star Command. Do all toys start out thinking they're real, or is Buzz unique in that regard? Did all the other toys have a similar coming-to-grips-with-it experience? I found my moving buddy. What a whore. Buzz is in the typical I'm a toy pose here, but how did a deluded toy such as himself ever learn to do this? How did he know not to say anything to humans when he really thought for a fact that he was a space ranger? Said some strange things like you know what? Bravo for simulating the passage of time with the shadows. That just blows my mind. This is a hilarious moment when Buzz thinks he's gonna die, but you're telling me this is the first time since his arrival that his helmet has come off? Andy has had enough time to change his posters and linens and ditch Woody for a new favorite toy, but he hasn't pressed all the buttons yet? A real little boy pushed all those buttons back as soon as the gift was open. Every single piece of exploded combat Carl debris flies straight at our main characters, instead of any of the other directions in the 360 degree spectrum that it could have flown. Somehow this nudge from the car knocks all these tacks out of the corkboard. Ah, I see Buzz Lightyear went to the Prometheus school running away from things. <laughs> Buzz Wilhelm. Hey mom, be right down! This is why this toys come to life while humans are gone thing would never work. They got bailed out here only because Andy yelled down to his mom. Wide open window is still left wide open when family leaves for Pizza Planet. I'm assuming they're going to Pizza Planet at a decent hour, but they go to a filling station that is practically deserted and a surrounding town that looks totally deserted. Can I help pump the gas? Sure, I'll even let you drive. Also, Andy always closes his door at home, but he leaves the van's door wide open while they pump the gas and presumably go into the store, allowing not only Buzz and Woody to exit, but for any hobo to sneak into the van. Also, it took like five seconds for Andy's mom to put the nozzle in the gas tank, start fueling, and completely leave the gas pumps so that Woody and Buzz could have their fight and no one could see it. Okay, not to be an asshole or anything, but once you're out of the view of the driver, you don't need to sit still, do you? You are a toy! Woody and Buzz argue loudly so that any truck driver could hear. Luckily, no one does. Conveniently, the Chuck E. Cheese-like Pizza Planet also delivers and just happens to drive to this abandoned gas station where I heard a guy got murdered that one time. Monstrous stack of pizzas allows Buzz the perfect cover. Also, isn't this plan totally over once he grabs the pizzas and delivers them to whomever? 
He's gonna see him when he takes the pizzas or when he comes back, right? Pizza delivery guy leaves his pizza sleeves in the truck to keep Buzz's plan working. Pizza Planet serves a 128 ounce Mega Gulp. Also, burgers. Buzz and Woody demonstrate they can somehow see out of these containers by freezing in position well before the kids run by. Then demonstrate they can't see out of the containers by running into each other. Sid just happens to be at the Pizza Planet because evil always lurks at pizza themed restaurants. I go on to a better place. Sid puts one quarter in and gets a prize on the first pull. This claw works unlike any other in the history of the prize machine universe. I'm sorry, Sid doesn't win this one. There's no way. Evil character has at least one light source that is a single bulb swinging free from a chain cliche. Here's where Buzz finally learns that he's just a toy, but one thing is off about this. It's this room. The adult sleeping in the recliner is obviously into hunting, with the duck wallpaper and the deer head mounted on the wall. There are cans strewn about that say cola and root beer, but we should take these to suggest alcohol, not soft drinks. There's a wrench used to turn on the power of the TV and a coat hanger used as an antenna. A forlorn guitar propped up against it. It's a poor family, possibly a failed musician. What program is this down in the dumps adult watching where a Buzz Lightyear commercial targeted at kids would be playing? The string of Christmas lights that Woody was hiding in have disappeared in this shot and magically reappear in this shot. How would you even begin to get back into position and put this away in time if someone walked into the room right now? Woody's been gone for, like, not even a day yet and everything falls apart. Catch this! <laughs> that would be an impossible throw for a human to make. Even Dude Perfect would need like 20 or 30 takes. But they're cannibals! We saw them eat those other toys! That's great, but how does Sid explain this to himself when he sees the magically fixed toys? It sure wasn't his parents that did it. Can you fall asleep and stay asleep while still holding something like this hat? Wouldn't it drop to the floor the moment you started to drip off? Okay, movie, you cheated. Just 15 seconds ago, Buzz couldn't even look at his foot without making the standard noises that accompany the movement of hard plastic toy action figures. But then so we can have a little woody surprise, Buzz is suddenly able to stand up and walk away and climb up on top of the crate without making a single sound, with a heavy-ass rocket taped to his back. Sid's alarm clock goes off at 7 a.m., which he set the previous night at 8.25. That means it took roughly 11 hours for Woody to start asking Buzz to help while he was under the crate. What the hell was he doing before then? Toys don't need to sleep. Okay, let's move! Either Sid is taking way too long to launch his firecracker buzz, or these misfit toys and Woody put together a fairly elaborate plan way too f***ing quickly. Sid's sister heard the doorbell, but not the skateboard full of toys going down the stairs. Two, one! Reach for the sky! Woody waits much longer than he needs to in order to distract Sid. I mean, sh that fuse is practically lit already. Wind up frog comes out of the mud completely clean. I'm okay with talking sentient toys in a movie. I really am. But I'm not okay with talking sentient toys that can run fast enough to catch up to a truck moving at even the slowest speed. Toys' plastic fingers have a stronger grip than a dog's jaws. In other words, yeah, no, Woody is puppy chow. Andy's family moved without sealing their boxes. Well, thank goodness for that conveniently timed and extremely long red light. This is cute and all, but you can clearly see that while Woody is being spun, he only has the accelerator pressed on the controller. And nothing is touching the steering wheel abortion, so RC should not be spinning in circles right now. Also, RC is a talking sentient toy like the rest of them. There are times in this movie where he freely moves of his own will, so how does this work? Does the remote control supersede RC's own will as a thinking toy? Why doesn't the remote controller have its own separate sentient personality? <laughs> There's a jump button on that controller, too. This guy in the blue car must be flipping out. Seeing a remote control car driving two other toys toward a moving van with a bunch of other toys cheering them in the back. Whoever's driving this truck doesn't notice this shit. <laughs> ah, Disney. Didn't we get enough of that song the year before this came out? I'm sorry, Slink, but in my experience with your sort of toy, you're basically worthless forever now. You'd make a decent instrument for strangulation or accidental maiming of oneself, and that's about it. The rocket! The match! Wow, that match never fell out during all that? Hell, I'm kind of surprised the rocket didn't fall off, but the match? That thing is long gone. And don't get me started on Woody's hat, either. <laughs> what? This is where I stop and ask you to ponder one thing. If Sid had never tortured Woody, then Woody and Buzz would never be able to put this plan together and be returned to Andy, which means the movie's sort of saying torture is a necessary evil. And I'm okay with that. And I am not okay with that. The street was dead empty for, like, forever just a second ago. Hey, wow! Andy asks no questions why the two toys he was looking for suddenly show up in a box right next to him. Let's go home and play. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did! What's that button do? I'll show you. Never give up. Never surrender. <laughs> Dead elf.
something on our back. Flight guidance. We're getting awfully close to center here. Aquarius, watch that middle gimbal. We don't want you tumbling off in space. Right, I'll inform Houston. I'm well aware of the goddamn gimbals. <laughs> I don't like confrontations. You little scumbag. I got your name. I got your ass. You will not laugh. You will not cry. You will learn by the numbers. I will teach you. What do you say I get someone else to watch the sheep tonight? Oh. Uh oh. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Sorry. Oh, I'm dizzy. But that never happened in home, Hank.